In order to calculate the induced EMF between the ends of the wire, we first need to draw a picture based on the given description. What we will do is call this direction the north direction, this direction is west, and then this direction is east. You can imagine looking down on the wire from a bird's eye perspective. And then we have the wire moving horizontally to the north. So in this picture, that's moving upward, as indicated by this velocity vector here. And the wire is held in an east-west direction. So we can see the wire is held in that direction, east-west. And as it slides upward, as it moves to the north, it is traveling through a magnetic field that is directed downward. Now, because we are taking a bird's eye perspective, downward in this case would be pointing into the computer screen. And so we can see that these X's would indicate the direction of the magnetic field pointing into the computer screen. To calculate this induced EMF, we just come over to this expression here. We know that if we have a conducting bar or wire with a certain length, and it's moving through a magnetic field with a speed V, and a magnetic field is perpendicular to the wire or bar, then indeed there will be an induced EMF symbolized by this symbol here. We can see that all we need to do is multiply the magnetic field by the length by the speed. Very, very straightforward. So the induced EMF will equal the magnetic field. Be a little careful here. The magnetic field is given, but it's given in microtesla. So you're going to have to do 40 times 10 to the minus 6 tesla. And that will convert microtesla into tesla. Then we multiply by the length, which is 2 meters. And then finally by the speed, which is 15 meters per second. So when you punch this into your calculator, you should get 0 0.0012. This is EMF, so the unit will be in volts. Your homework system might require millivolts, so we just do a nice conversion here in which 1 millivolt is equal to 10 to the minus 3 volts. So you're going to multiply by 1 over 10 to the minus 3 Notice the way in which we set that up. The volts will cancel, leaving us with the desired unit of millivolts. So the induced EMF ends up being 1.2 millivolts. So this would be the correct answer to the first part of the question. The second part of the question asks us to determine which end is positive. And to do that, we're going to have to follow a right-hand rule. So let's draw a right-hand So here is an attempt at drawing the right hand. I'm very bad at doing this. But what I've tried to show is my right hand being held in a flat manner, not in a curled manner that you may have learned about in class, but in a flat manner. You'll notice that my thumb, which I've colored in red, is pointing in the same direction as the velocity of the bar. And then my four fingers, which I've colored in green, are pointing in the same direction as the magnetic field which is into the page. So those four fingers are supposed to be depicted pointing into the computer screen. When you do this, your palm should be naturally pointing to the left. I know it's not very obvious with this drawing, but maybe you can mimic it with your own right hand, keeping it flat. But your palm would be pointing to the left. And what that indicates is a magnetic force that will push on the charges of the wire. Now specifically, the magnetic force will push the positive charges of the wire to the left. So what happens is, as that magnetic force pushes on the positive charges, there is an accumulation of positive on this side of the wire. Well, remember from our directions that that side of the wire was the west end of the wire. So it will indeed be the west end that will accumulate the positive charge. So this would be the correct answer for the second part of the question.